Hey guys, so I realized that I did not give an adequate intro to this video. So this video is going to be my um, skincare faux sort of skincare that I, I guess you could say regret purchasing or bought into the hype of them. Um, I'm by no means saying that these products are bad. I'm just saying that they did not either one work for my skin or I will hold on to some of them and try to reincorporate them as I figure my skin out. Also, I have more normal to dry, sensitive-ish skin. Oh, yep, the second thing was that I just moved into a new place where there are a lot of noises, so you're gonna hear random things in the background. You may hear bugs because I'm next to this forest situation. You may hear cars driving by. You may hear just a lot of things, but I did try to speak above the noise and I hope it's not too distracting. But apologies, I do not have a fancy microphone. We're not there yet. We're not really ready to make investments like that yet. So um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this regardless and I'll see you guys later. I'll start with one. I will start with this. Curology. So I did the Curology trial and I got like the three kit, the face wash, the moisturizer, and then this is like the magic bottle that's, you know, has a serum that's specifically for you. And what I will say is I don't think Curology worked for me because I just don't know enough about my skin. So Curology will really be successful for those people who really know what their skincare issues are, they know their skin type, they understand their breakouts and where it's coming from and they know how to describe their skin. And when I was doing the little quiz thing for Curology, I was just kind of guessing throughout because I wasn't really sure what my breakouts were, if I had normal to dry, if I was normal to oily, if I was just normal, if I should have a gel moisturizer, if I should have a cream moisturizer. Curology was a mess for me to um, just to, to just keep it cute and short. Curology ended up being a mess for me. In the beginning, it was, I was like, ooh, this is like clearing up, you know, somewhat, somewhat. Um, but it really just made my skin dry and I felt that my skin was overproducing oil. Okay, so I guess we can just dive into the next brand of things, which is going to be The Ordinary. So The Ordinary has a very loyal hive that comes out to attack anybody that speaks negatively about anything they do. And I'm here to say, I don't have anything against The Ordinary, but I am personally done with The Ordinary as of right now. I have found other products that have like full formulations. I personally favor formulations. I like when an active is formulated with other hydrating things or when something hydrated is formulated formulated with something moisturizing like i like i like multifaceted products so the first one i'll start with is this glycolic acid seven percent toning solution this is a really popular one and you can see that i've used a pretty generous amount of this stuff um my only thing with this is that I think it's just a little too harsh for my skin. And even though the next day I have this amazing glow, I, I feel like over time my skin grows more sensitive when I use this product. And I found... Next is this, which is the Buffet. Um... Again, sort of the same deal where I found more like multifaceted serums that do a lot more. And I, I really don't like the texture of this. This did come in handy. I'm not saying that this is a bad product. It has a weird texture that feels a little bit sticky and it makes your skin really shiny in a way that I don't like. 
for me, this doesn't leave a glow from within texture or it doesn't leave a glow from within um, shine. It just leaves shine. That's just not for me. It's not for me. There are other cheap serums that I just think are a little bit more sophisticated than this one. And that's not to say, again, that this didn't necessarily work for me. I just didn't enjoy it. So the next item is from The Ordinary again. It is the Mandelic Acid 10% plus HA. Actually, this I am still going to keep in my arsenal. I just, I'm not actually sure whether I really like this or not. Um, I haven't used that much of it. When I used it, it was okay. I'm gonna keep this one and we'll see how she does under different circumstances. And that's what I will be doing with this girl. Okay, next brand is going to be CeraVe. I absolutely love CeraVe. I use a lot of their products still, but these two products are just like, mm, like I'm good on these. When my friends come over, I'm going to suggest that they use them and then take it with them because I no longer have use for it. So um, the first one is going to be the Renewing Salicylic Acid Cleanser. A lot of people love this. You can even see that I've used a good chunk of it. Are you guys done? Are you guys done? Are you guys done? Okay. This is not the most stripping salicylic acid cleanser out there. I just think my skin and salicylic acid don't quite work like that. They're just not, they just don't get along that well. And that's not to say that salicylic acid doesn't break me out, but I feel that I can only really do it in small, small doses. And um, I can't use this all the time. Like I would use this at the most once a week. And to be honest, I don't even use salicylic acid. It's not bad. It just doesn't work for my skin. And I actually think a lot of people would enjoy this cleanser. My friend loves it. Next time she comes here, she's going to take it with her. Okay, the next item is also in the retinol category. It's the Versed gentle retinol serum this one will go along with my mandelic acid where i am not fully removed or opposed to incorporating this back into my skincare regimen encapsulated yeah so it's encapsulated which means that it works over time and the reason why they choose to do stuff like that is because it's more gentle for sensitive skin so I really do appreciate that. I just think sometimes I'm someone who likes quick results. And when I don't get them, I feel like a product isn't effective when it's really just supposed to take longer. It's supposed to take more time. So um, I will be holding on to this and um, try to reincorporate it back once I'm you know, slow off of tretinoin. Next item is Kate Somerville's Wrinkle Warrior Pink Plumping Mask. You know, I bought this at Marshalls or TJ Maxx, but I bought it regardless. So know that before you listen to anything else I say. I didn't buy this from like a Sephora or from her website. I did not. I don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy this and I really want one of my friends who has more resistant skin to take this because I think they may just enjoy the um, experiential nature of it. It has fragrance, it has glitter, it has dye. I am very much a fragrance free, no frills, no glitter please type of skincare girl. I don't even find it that hydrating, um, which is another thing. But I do think people that, you know, like to wear like the gold masks or just like masks that are fun and like playful would really enjoy that, which there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so that is it for my skincare foes by annual 
haul slash review thing and I hope that you guys found this helpful. Let me know what skincare you have indulged in that you kind of regret indulging in or you're just kind of like not vibing with it, not feeling it. I hope the bugs weren't too loud and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.